Welcome to Hot Topics in International Trade, brought to you by Braumiller Law Group and Braumiller Consulting Group. Hi, this is Bob Brewer with Braumiller Law Group and Braumiller Consulting Group. Welcome to the podcast. Joining me once again is Carrie Wang, Senior Associate Hi. Attorney, Braumiller Law Group. Now, I say Wang, you say Wong. Am I saying it Wong? <laughs> No, I said it right. It's Bob. all right, Bob. Mm-hmm. You can, yes. Only I can say Wang and you say Wang. I, mean, <laughs> I just want to get it right. Carrie. Carrie. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So what we want to talk about today is the Build America, Buy America Act. And Carrie's going to fill us in. I mean, my opinion is this goes back decades as to when bad management actually created the unions. The unions then got together and created a high labor cost per hour, which then cost us companies moving out of the United States of America offshore, and we've been trying to bring them back ever since. And This is kind of one of the ways that the government says, now that we're putting the money into the infrastructure, it only makes sense for us to build this domestically, so to speak. Let's use American products. Now, granted, there are going to be some waivers as it comes down to sourcing on things that you can prove to the government that we absolutely positively cannot get domestically or in a specific quantity. We can talk about that, too. Mm-hmm. But can you explain in this Build America, Buy America Act is, is why kind of I did a little bit on what it's implemented. But what are the key objectives of BABA? Let's call it BABA. <laughs> Sure, sure, Bob. So Build America, Buy America was enacted as part of Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, uh, IJA, which is often referred to as Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. So this program is mainly to secure that, to ensure that the infrastructure projects funded by federal government use the materials that are produced in the United States. So the goals of the program is to boost uh, America manufacturing, uh, create more jobs, uh, reduce the reliance on foreign materials. Uh, but the key objective is to use the taxpayers' money to Build America using domestically sourced materials. Gotcha. Well, speaking of that, then what what types of projects um, like our materials are covered under this BABA Act? Then yes, so the BABA covers a wide a range of infrastructure projects like public transit, highway, roads, uh, bridges, a uh, broadband, mm-hmm. uh, energy facilities. It covered a wider range of projects. Uh, one, uh, one to decide what is considered as infrastructure projects, federal agencies are given wide uh, and broad discre- uh, discretion to decide what is considered as an infrastructure project. Okay. As long as it serves a public function, it is for a public accommodation, it will likely to be considered as a public project, uh, infrastructure project, sorry. So um, the key is a lot of these funds are um, issued or are given are granted following uh, this roadmap of the funds which we call notice of funding opportunities short for NOFO so a lot of the NOFOs are the roadmap of those grants so when regards whether you're contractors or subcontractors or award recipient sub recipient the first thing you need is to look up the NOFO to understand the relevant agencies you're working with and the detail of the grants. And more importantly, a lot of those NOFOs will reiterate the BABA requirements mm-hmm. along with some specific additional requirements from that relevant agency. So NOFO is one of the important documents you'll need to be looking uh, looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, uh, and another thing is uh, last year, as of August, the Office of Management Budget from White House issued a final implementation guidance. It's a relatively very detailed guidance on uh, implementation of the BABA. It basically explained to everyone how to comply with BABA. So if everyone want to be familiar with the topic, I think that will be uh, the first uh, guidance you need to uh, review. All right, because I still have those BABA 101 questions going through my mind. Like, mm-hmm. So this opens up all this money getting put into infrastructure. All these 
companies bidding yes, yes. on this. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I would imagine the government's going to look at and almost favor those who understand exactly. exactly how this is put together. And then this goes back to then the waivers. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, before I talk about waivers, I also want to just continue explaining a little bit more on what materials are okay. covered by BABA. So BABA requests that iron or steel products manufactured products and construction materials to be produced in the United States. So depending on the categorization, uh, as I mentioned, the three categorization, the standards uh, of compliance vary. For example, for iron or steel products, they request the different stages from initial batching, melting, bending, coating, and a final manufacturing process occurred in the United States. So basically, every stage of iron or steel products manufacturing process have to occur in the United States. So that said, you have to determine the categorization of your product, then make sure that product comply with the applicable standard uh, set forth in BABA. Okay. Yeah, and it's sometimes it can be very challenging to comply with BABA. So therefore, uh, we need to various agencies have uh, started this weaver process. According to BABA, federal agencies are able to give in waivers based on um, some factors. Um, one is public interest of issuing the BABA or complying with, is, is complying the BABA is not aligned with the public interest, they would be able to issue a waiver. Uh, if the products are not commercially available in the United States, they're able to issue a waiver. Or sometimes if the cost of using uh, domestic source materials will uh, increase entire cost for more than 20 25%, that is unreasonable cost. The federal agency are also able to issue a waiver. Depending on the agencies, the waiver process may vary. So therefore, you need to navigate to the relevant agencies and review their process, uh, which add another layer of complexity to this issue. So you need to review the process, understand um, uh, you know, the requirements and do your applications. And after you submit the application, there is always a public comment period and after that the agencies may decide whether uh, give or uh, issue a waiver or not and the waiver can be issued as a project specific waiver or general waiver uh, it's kind of self-explanatory if it's a project specific waiver that is only specific to that uh, project, that uh, program, that that grants. So these are, so these are some of the challenges then when you have to look at you know, do my products qualify? Yes, exactly. Bala, yes. Know? And if you're not qualified, you consider the waiver. Yes. But th they it's just add another uh, layer of difficulties to the issue itself because there are a lot of challenges uh, to comply with BABA. It is not um, easy to just, uh, you know, switch the suppliers and find uh, the domestic sourced materials to begin with. Uh, and BABA not only applies to construction itself, it also covers uh, the maintenance and the, the repair, right? So, um, for example, you know, if there is a, a public train station has some issue and needs some repair, um, and they this is a BABA program, they use the BABA fundings, uh, they use the IJA funding, sorry, the by the funding from the by uh, partisan infrastructure law, and they have to be BABA compliant. So this repair part, this repair part also has to be BABA compliant. And now you have all these people waiting for this public transportation uh, to be uh, back to normal, but but meanwhile, people who working on this project have to make sure the repair part is uh, BABA compliant. What if there is a supply chain disruption? What if they just couldn't secure this part locally? That means this can just uh, postpone this repair process for extended time. So this public transportation may not be able to uh, for public use for a long time. So that is challenging. And um, just and also I mentioned the waiver process itself is also very challenging. You need to figure out the relevant agency. You need to figure out, you know, their respective process. You need to do your application and make sure there are no, uh, you know, the public comments that against your waiver. So it's, it is definitely a challenging process. 
and developing a good relationship with local suppliers, with American suppliers, it's also is very challenging. There are a lot of gaps in your supply chain. Maybe are not Baba compliant, and you have you it you you just physically cannot bring all those materials using supply chain to Baba compliance overnight. So it is a very challenging. Yeah, I can imagine where sometimes the things you know I can get this product from China tomorrow. And yes. I can get it less expensive tomorrow. Yes, and yes. The quality may be the same. What do you want to do? <laughs> yes, and the cost too. Like if you, a lot of company when they transition to the America source of materials, the cost just skyrocketed.、Mm -hmm. And think about it. This were pro. This were project that are initially funded by those money. What if,、uh, you know,、um, the because the the high high. Like the skyrocket of the cost, this project can just we're non we're no longer be afforded by the initial funding. Maybe、um, those projects just not going to happen anymore.、Yeah. Maybe use a foreign material. They were able to build this bridge, but now because it's new requirement, this bridge is maybe has difficult to be complete. Yeah. So that are the challenges. Well, looking at this, then how do you prepare? For potential changes,、uh, additional requirements in the future on this project. Yeah, absolutely. So Baba is still a law in the infancy. Even as I mentioned, the final final implementation guidance came out last year in August.、Yeah. So there are still uh, uh, uncertainty and not fully defined areas in the law itself. So there are we're expecting to see more. New guidance、uh, from agencies and from the OMB, from White House on this topic. So it is very important to stay on top of those. Make sure you're well informed.、Uh, you're well informed on the topic. And a lot of a federal agency they actually establish some Baba、uh, establish its own Baba office. For example,、um, the Department of Commerce NTIA they have this Baba office. I also know the Department of Energy they also have their Baba contact. So maybe for companies. That、uh, are you know in the business sector that are、um, dealing with this、uh, Baba compliance, they they need to establish a good report with those、uh, federal agencies,、uh, where you know in the cases where they have questions, they could、um, have a direct line with those agencies to help them、uh, to help、uh, their questions addressed immediately. So I think that will be helpful. Another thing is to,、um, uh, as I mentioned, to start to、uh, develop a good relationship with domestic suppliers.、Um, review your、uh, supply chain internally and identify the gaps and identify the foreign materials used in your supply chain, and to develop a strategy on how to bring your、uh, goods to Baba compliance and.、Um, Another thing I would say is、um, the training.、Uh, given the complexity of the program,、um, it is also important to make sure the stakeholders in your organization are also well informed, are well trained on the topic,、um, because it's a law that has new guidance they showed all the time. Maybe you can hold、uh, the monthly call or weekly call to make sure、uh, everyone are well aware of the updates, are、uh, keeping informed on the. Topics. So you're actually in the thick of this right now, helping some companies. Yes, yes. Can qualify. Yes, yes. We have been working closely with、uh, various companies on this topic, and they are it's it's the same challenging faced by all the stakeholders,、uh, but we are helping them navigate、uh, the the difficulties of the Baba. Well, you know your stuff on it. Well, Kara, I like to keep these to around fifty minutes, as you know. We appreciate you stopping by, and thanks everybody for participating. See you. Thank you.